CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Community Supported Agriculture implies that a community, a food community, a community centered around uh, uh, their food um, is supporting the source of that food. So it really is a food-centric community, uh, not merely in terms of purchase, but in terms of involvement. Uh, so there are many different uh, realities that are called CSA. Um, there are <laughs> a, a very diverse uh, variety of models of how CSA works, mm -hmm. um, but I, the fundamental premise is that the farmer, the person who actually grows the food, has a direct relationship with the people who eat the food. That's a one of each. Every CSA is different. You got, this guy's got ground that's great for growing spinach and, and lettuce and greens, uh, and that's what he puts in, and that's what his crowd of members really want. So that's what he grows, and he works out his rotation. I would say that the product that he's producing is, is far superior, both in freshness, quality, and diversity to what you can buy in a store. Mm -hmm. At the very best, if, uh, and there have been times when I have sold material to stores directly. I walk into a store, I show the shopkeeper my wares, my stuff, I say, here's my produce. Uh, he says, oh, this looks great. We negotiate a price. I sell him a box. Mm -hmm. the, the 20 or 30 people who purchase that product the day that I have brought it there are getting something that's equivalent to um, what the CSA members are getting. Mm -hmm. Then that produce man puts all of his vegetables in a refrigerator overnight. That ends the similarity. Just considering time as a factor, mm -hmm. um, food from a CSA, at least the way that we do it, is, is far superior in terms of freshness. The other aspect about a CSA, I think, is that the farmer is screening their material before it gets directly to the membership. Mm -hmm. And the decisions are not strictly based on shippability and cosmetics. Sometimes the things that I bring into market don't look good. Mm -hmm. And I say market, but I mean to distribution, to the CSA. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't look good. But I bring them because they happen to be superior in quality of taste, they happen to be uh, unusual or th they're at the perfect stage of ripeness. I may hold something for a few days or a week longer to make sure that it is at a better stage of ripeness mm -hmm. so that my membership has an opportunity to eat something that's really ripe. I'm not worried so much about shippability, although that's definitely a concern. Mm -hmm. It still has to get to distribution. I'm more worried about nutrition and flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm harvesting for that. As long as I always harvest for freshness and nutrition mm -hmm. as my two overarching criteria to, to de determine harvest dates on, on items, um, it will always be superior to what you get in a store because what you get in a store, whether you're an organic farmer or not, has to be harvested with shippability and storability as two of the overriding criteria. So, so direct direct sales, direct uh, um, producer to consumer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in consumer I don't mean just somebody who buys it, I mean the person who consumes it, the yeah. guy who eats it. Yeah. Direct producer to consumer is the shortest link between my field and your body in terms of nutrition and health. And, and I think that it is very uh, justifiably arguable uh, I think it's incontrovertible that the first step to health is good eating. And I think that good eating also 
uh, uh, demands, the, the concept of good eating demands that you eat things that are good. You <laughs> don't just eat well, you know what I mean? So that's, that's part of it. But what it really is, is it's a foundation for, for true sustainability in agriculture. It really is.